very good morning to you wherever you're watching from and thank you for joining us here on Citizen TV's Cheche, the program where opinion counts. We're also live on Hot 96 FM. I'm your host, Uduak Amimo. Our guest this morning needs no introduction. He is one of the men who would be president of Kenya. Indeed, his political star has been shining on the country since 1992 when he was one of the so-called youth for Kanu. He's been a minister in the Moi and Kibaki governments, but not without controversy. He has been associated with a number of scandals. He is also one of the pol politicians facing trial at the International Criminal Court over his alleged role in masterminding the post-election violence. So quite a lot to discuss with the MP for Eldred North, William Ruto. And also with me are Cheche resident panelist Mutegin Jiao of Citizen TV and political analyst David Makali. Good morning and welcome to the program, gentlemen. Um, Mr. Ruto, I'll start with you because the headlines in the papers um, this morning all talk about an alleged um, plot emanating from State House, um, which claims that uh, you and several other politicians are projects funded by um, State House to divide um, the vote going into the elections um, in order to deny the Prime Minister Raila Odinga pre uh, presidency, but also to ensure that Uhuru Kenyatta wins. <laughs> Are you a project? <laughs> 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 well, uh, in my earlier response, um, these allegations have been around for almost a month now. You know, I think uh, Jirongo has been ranting all over the country about uh, these alleged uh, projects. I had um, all along refused to um, dignify those uh, falsehoods with my response. And in fact, I had um, the, the best that URP could do was Kutun uh, to tell Jirongo his peace of mind. Now, uh, I think what we are witnessing is um, Jirongo, who is a member of URP, who is basically throwing uh, tantrums because um, things are not adding up. I think that's all. I mean, and I think uh, people should just ignore Jirongo. I think um, whatever he's saying is not worth uh, anybody's so time. Jirongo, do you used to be very good friends? We are very good friends even now. Uh, okay. But politically different. What was the main, main cause of this? You, you see, uh, Cyrus, uh, as I call him, is, um, has a convoluted way of looking at politics. You know, I have tried to persuade him to look at politics through the lenses of reality. You know, why you see him throw tantrums is because um, he had uh, hinged he, his politics on two issues. He went to Western, told the, 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 the Western nation that if Mudavadi is going to run, I'm going to support him. Then he believed that Mudavadi would never gather the, uh, the courage to get out of ODM and run. Then uh, Mudavadi did uh, the unimaginable and actually left ODM and is actually running. So he doesn't know what to tell the Luya nation now that Mudavadi is running, and he already said that he was going to support him if he ran. Issue number two. When he came to URP, he again believed that William Ruto would not be in the ballot. And therefore, let me be a nice guy around. And uh, when uh, the obvious happens, the obvious then, is meaning you're, you're <laughs> going to okay, the Hague. Just a when point. I have a short trip to right. the Hague, yeah. then he... <laughs> But he now, the, 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 in the, the situation it's is different. such that William Ruta may, after all, be around. So this is a man whose world of politics has collapsed, and therefore he, he is ranting. He's flinging uh, himself. He's David, what's your take on this? Do you agree <laughs> with that uh, um, um, uh, well, analysis? I, I'm not sure that I agree totally with uh, what Honorable uh, Ruta is saying. Uh, for uh, I, do, I don't expect uh, you to agree. <laughs> 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 yeah, because one, I mean, this information is coming from an insider, somebody who has been in URP, in the alliance, so to speak, in the G7 alliance. Uh, the alliance has been on for a while. I agree with uh, uh, William's uh, description of, of um, Jirongo's 
political approach and perhaps those factors is outlined are actually true but to the extent that he says the plot that uh, Jirongo alleges uh, about state house funding or supporting political movements or parties to uh, achieve those two objectives i'm a bit skeptical about his explanation uh, one because one Jirongo comes from inside these political formations and they've had engagements obviously deans here and there that have made this movement go forward the g7 go forward two what Jirongo is saying is not new these things have been on the on the table they're in the public domain since musalia left odm that he had been financed to get out of there that the money he's been using was actually facilitated for him by some people close to state house so i think that uh, I, you know i'm not entirely persuaded you know, by uh, william's uh, explanation Mutegi, um what do you think about G, uh, david's um, argument that uh, it sounds as if if it's it's been around long enough repeated long enough it must be the truth it it, 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 it we if when um um party you what did you call it udf udf was formed musadi was nowhere at all we know the people who formed it they call themselves consultants there is no way Nick Wajohi could have been doing that for pay. And all those fellows are sitting with the president. So when uh, uh, Moshimo is saying that is not necessarily the truth, I don't seem to agree with him. Gentlemen, when you want to discuss UDF, you know who to call. I, have, I don't hold brief for UDF. So I'm, I hear you guys talking about UDF. I don't belong to UDF. If uh, UDF was formed by Wanjoy and whoever else, that is their business. I belong to a party called United Republican Party, and I speak for that party. I want to tell my friend Makali, Jirongo has never been in G7. He never, he, he had issues with me in URP because of associating with G7, and it was in public domain. And uh, he always believed that uh, being a member of G7 would promote um, uh, Uhuru, who is a Kikuyu, and, and that kind of things, which I, I, I think uh, if we ethnicize politics, if we take, pol if you say, I am not going to be in this because you now uh, the Kikuyus want to succeed themselves using the presidency and, uh, and, and then we want to support Uhuru, I think that has been his major beef. For me, Kenyans will get the leaders they deserve and they elect. Nobody is going to be elected because of their tribe or religion or other consideration. And trying to uh, fashion a political uh, uh, reasoning along who should not because of their tribe is cheap, retrogressive, primitive and backward. Okay. And I told Jirongo as much. I told him we are in G7 not because we are promoting anybody. And for the record, coming together with, uh, by politicians, we are not starting today. When we were in Kano, Kano was a national party. But those who had little parties, DP, uh, NDP, I don't know, small, small things, they went Imagine. and ganged up and formed NAC. Right? In 2007, we were in Kano. Others were in LDP. Others were in other parties. We came together and formed ODM. Surely. I mean, what, okay. what rocket science is there okay. Okay. When, okay. when we come together again under G G7 Alliance? We are not investing, inventing anything. David, your thoughts very quickly. Yeah, because I, we I, 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 I'm a bit concerned about what he said that Jerome was not part of G7. He wasn't. Uh, he moved out of K Kadu. I mean, people are moving from their parties because, you know, you said, for example, ODM was dictatorial. Let me just finish. Right. Uh, others have moved from their parties because they either, you know, were not home in those parties or they wanted to associate with your, your bid for presidency. <coughs> mm -hmm. Why did uh, Jirongo move from Kadu, which he was the only MP, he was the principal, actually the founder of that party. Correct. Why did you find it comforted for him to abandon his party and join your party? Two, if you say he was not in G7, what is G7? Mm. If he was okay. a European, he was not in G7. Okay. G7, let us leave the discussion for G7 for another day. I'm sure you know what G7 is. But yeah. let me answer you directly. Okay. Let me answer you directly. I have told you, Jirongo left his party, uh, Kadu, Kadu. Uh, and, came to, and came to URP. He didn't come to G7. Right? Jirongo is on record. Look for the newspapers. He has never wanted to be in G7 because of his own small reasons. But we, we came to URP, you know. And um, 
He started complaining from the day we launched in Bombers. Because he, he wanted to be, you know, the next guy and that kind of thing. But you see, he found that this was a huge political movement. It was not a party that belonged to me or him. And, and uh, that, that is why he's finding it very difficult. Okay. Lately, what are the complaints of Jirongo? In. Jirongo has been complaining, oh, William Ruta does not pick my phone. Right. Yeah. What, what kind of... He what told kind of FM that. Um, <laughs> that. Uh, Mr. Ruta, I'll ask you to answer the question again um, as to whether you're a project, because several of our viewers are texting in, yeah. asking you to respond to that directly. Are you project. a project or not? My dear sister, I have been in this game for fairly long. If I wasn't a project in 1997, when I started my politics, 15 years down the road, you don't expect me to be anybody's project. What do you say to the claims in the newspaper today that since the coming of Musalia Mudavan into the presidential contest, mm -hmm. you are now thinking of, or uh, you have started talking to one Raila Odinga? I think these are wishful thinkers who are just uh, fashioning stories for purposes of selling the newspaper. Okay. You, um, have not, you have not met, all these have been speculative stories. There's been no meeting between you, there's been no discussion about you getting you together. Didn't, didn't even have some I, think, I, think, I think the Prime Minister and his team have equally responded to that, uh, to that issue. When we decide to work <coughs> with anybody, we will not be doing so under the cover of night, or we will not be doing so uh, in some hidden place. I mean, I am a free Kenyan. The Prime Minister is a free Kenyan. When the time comes, if ever it will, and I doubt whether it will ever come for us to talk, we will do so in broad day. Okay. So let's just get, um, let's run through some of your responses to the news of the, of the week before we uh, yeah. talk uh, at length about your president, uh, presidential um, ambitions. Mm -hmm. um, several attempts to uh, uh, amend the constitution, mutilate the constitution is what mm -hmm. uh, some newspapers mm -hmm. are calling it. What is your response um, to these proposed amendments, the university degree requirement for MPs? Um, let's start with that. But you're hoping. Let's start with... Mm -hmm. let's Num number one, mm -hmm. I, I think we are really uh, writing into the people's minds what is not there. There weren't any discussions about the constitution in parliament. There weren't any constitutional amendments in parliament. For anybody to tell the people of Kenya that we are mutilating the constitution, I don't know where, which world they live in. I mean, really, I expect a responsible media station like Citizen to check its facts. No, it's that true. is it's not the, the Constitution. That's the not constitution. True. Actually, there <coughs> are no constitutional amendments. People did not say that there was an amendment to the Constitution. They but said that the law which was being passed contravenes the spirit and provisions of the Constitution. And that is why, when you saw, when I responded in Wajia, I said, if any law is passed in Parliament mm -hmm. that contravenes the Constitution, it will be null and void. And there are, there are mechanisms. Either the president will reject it or the court will nullify that, that, that law. So really, I, I don't think anybody should uh, raise a necessary temperature in the country that the constitution is being amended. But we expect members of parliament to be aware, yes. to be awake to uh, legislation which contradicts the constitution, but which is where the media this, is taking on this parliament. Is, this is a matter of opinion. That is why, if, if it was expected that way, you wouldn't have the provision for the president to reject, and you wouldn't have the provision for uh, the, the court <coughs> to, to take action but speak whenever, to David's point whenever about the parliament MPs being custodians of the constitution and failing in that duty. Because otherwise, William, we will go back to we'll go to parliament, go back to the constitution, keep the judiciary busy, and the country will not move forward because we have a retrogressive these, legislation these, all these, the time. These are matters of opinion. If in the opinion of uh, certain members of parliament, they think this is okay, and they gather the numbers in parliament, that is what a democracy is all about. But these are the same we are not, MPs who think it's okay not, not to pay country. taxes we are not and to increase their salaries. A dictatorship. No, 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 you know? hang on. I this mean, is the same parliament that thinks you, it's okay. If you, are looking, if you are looking at democracy, they say democracy is the worst form of government. Yes. But <laughs> a good one is yet to be found. And democracy dictates that... When the majority, uh, the majority will have their say, their yes, way, yes. but the minority will have their say. And even in a situation where parliament has passed <coughs> certain pieces of legislation, democracy de demands, sorry, that it can be reversed by other institutions that have been put in place by the same constitution. So what is going on here is purely constitutional. We, nobody, we has, nobody has broken the constitution. If parliament oversteps as it would once in a while, the president and other arms of the constitution will reign in.
the problem here, William, is that the citizens of this country who elected these members of parliament are yeah. discordant, in discordance with their members of parliament. They are passing legislation that seem to favor themselves. So they are benefit. benefit. Exactly. Benefit. So benefit. this is not, yeah. this is an yeah. abuse of democracy Let because we gave example. them the right, but they are abusing those rights Let while they have left an us. Example. When parliament passed that uh, members of parliament should have university degrees, there was an, a poll on uh, citizen. I watched it. It was 88 percent Kenyan said yes. They wanted their members of parliament to have degrees. Where is the discordance? Okay. Um, Number two. And, and you see, I personally believe that uh, members of parliament should have university degrees. Right. I personally believe. Okay, so that's but I am saying, okay. let us accommodate those who don't. By saying, let us uh, extend the, the, the timeline to five years so that they go to school. Okay. I go to school myself, not because I need a university degree, but because I want to improve my knowledge. Right. We have to go on a break. Now, very quickly, your views on party hopping. Yes or no? I think members, uh, the, the constitution already, section 103 of the constitution is already suspended. The section saying you are deemed to have uh, left, left your party, party if you promote, you promote another party. Yeah. That is already suspended. That is the constitution provision, right? So what, what my parliament was trying to do is to, arrive, is to align the act, the political parties act, with the constitution by suspending those sections until the next election. That's all that happened in Parliament. Do you expect if you lose uh, presidency to be nominated? I, I don't parliament? expect to be nominated. That's one of the things they wanted. I, I think Parliament overreached itself there because I do not think that uh, this, the 12 seats that are for nomination in the Constitution are clear who should be nominated. Okay. And um, those who failed in elections do not fall in that category. Okay. We have to go on a break now. This is Cheche, live on Citizen TV and Hot 96 FM. Our guest today is presidential candidate William Ruto. When we come back, more on his road to State House. Send your opinions to SMS number 2442 and the Twitter handle is Cheche underscore TV. Welcome back to Cheche, live on Citizen TV and Hot 96 FM. I'm Udwa Kamimo, along with panelists Mutegi Njau and David Makali. William Ruto, the presidential candidate, MP and ICC suspect, is our guest this morning. Uh, Mr. Ruto, you have your supporters and they've been uh, texting in. But there are those who wonder about your audacity in contesting for the highest office in the land, given the gravity of the charges you're facing. How... Do you respond to them? Well, uh, the gravity of the charges uh, that uh, I face at the ICC go to the extent to which um, my conscience tells me I'm responsible. I can tell you for a fact, I go home and sleep. I do my business as usual, as always. Because deep inside my being, I, am, I know for a fact that those charges are a fiction. To be alleged that you have 3,000 guns, you have an army of I don't know what, you have, you know, ridiculous. Okay. Um, know, to, to say the least. And therefore, I will go about my business as if uh, nothing happened, because um, that is my position. Okay, so charges of murder, charges of deportation, charges of persecution, you think um, are fiction. You feel that you have nothing to do with absolutely. them, in spite of... Absolutely. 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 I have nothing. Absolutely nothing to do with those. Even if you have nothing to do with them, mm -hmm. um, would... Uh, your conscience not demand that you clear your name first given the seriousness the gravity of these charges you clear your name and then contest the presidency once your name is cleared my name is clear as far as i'm concerned you're facing trial at the icc my are, so it is up to those who are uh, peddling those charges to grapple with my lawyers on to what extent uh, they can uh, ever prove 
that an iota of what they are saying has any basis with respect to William Ruto. Okay, if we look at the perception though of William Ruto and the perception of Kenya created by the fact that a presidential candidate is facing these serious crimes against humanity and that uh, if you believe that you could make it to State House, um, Kenya has the possibility of um, having a president with such a stain on his record. Does that not bother you? You see, you get bothered if inside you you know you be, these charges will be dismissed already you can see the signs number one they had charged us under section 25 25 uh, 3a that we are perpetrators when they went for this status conference they say they want to review that down to d where we are saying we're just contributors you know we, we we didn't own the war we were just you know <coughs> we found a war that was there we were just throwing in stones because, because this thing is a fallacy. Secondly, when, uh, the, the, when, during the status conference, they themselves said, oh, we are not ready, we don't have the <coughs> evidence, we are still gathering evidence, let's try in March next year. That is the prosecution. It just simply tells you that what these people are hanging on to is, 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 is a lot of hot air. Okay. And, and I agree with you that... Uh, I mean, it's something to think about. Right. But you see, assuming that I gave in and said, oh, let me uh, go home, let me go and sit under a tree and wait for these charges, I would actually be telling Kenyans, you know, I am thinking that uh, maybe I have something to do with this. I mean, surely I will not, with an iota of, of effort, lend credence to falsehood and propaganda that have been labeled against me about this case. Okay. What about the wider interest of Kenyans? Um, you say that it's a fallacy. So in the unlikely event that um, the charges are dismissed or um, found to be true, and you know, in the event that uh, you become president, what about the welfare of the country in terms of um, you know, having a president with such serious, um, who's been convicted of such serious crimes? I mean, if the charges for, God forbid, mm -hmm. whatever reason, uh, if I am convicted, I would, I would be then be forced to step down. I mean, that is, uh, the presidents are forced to step down under many circumstances. The uh, parliament, for example, under our constitution, uh, Senate can impeach a president if, if, that is, if that be the case. But I want to tell you, it won't get there. Let me ask you. Yeah. You, are, you are very convinced that you are very innocent. Mm -hmm. In your deep best heart, mm -hmm. why do you think this happened to you? Why are you? I think your guess is as good as mine, Motegi. You know, I think your guess is as why good as mine. Why are there many politicians? Mm -hmm. there. I think your guess, well, is why, why your, your guess is as good as mine. That uh, this whole mess had to be loaded on somebody. By who? Okambo is not a Kenyan? Okambo is not a Kenyan, but uh, who owns the case? As the, you ask yourself who owns the, the case? The ICC. Okay. The International Criminal Court. It is not a Kenyan case. Okay. You guys said you want to go to Hague. One of the, one of the people who said, hey, it's you. You said, let's go to Hague. Can you prove that? Are you for local? Can you prove that? I, uh, I'm assuming that. No, what but you see, uh, Motegi, you must be held responsible for what you say. Yes. And if you cannot prove that you in parliament, you are normally told to withdraw and yes. apologize. Yes. <laughs> okay. I will not tell you that. Yes. But my position <laughs> what has was been, your position? my position okay, was this. I could be wrong. I opposed the local tribunal. Yes. Because, I'm because of certain reasons, right? And by the way, in parliament, it wasn't a vote either for the local tribunal or for the Hague. It was not. The vote in parliament was to set up tribunal. a local tribunal. And our position was, if you want to set up a local tribunal, and, and we were very categorical that time, we said, there are two issues here. There were allegations of a stolen election. In fact, um, that South African, Krigler, after investigating forever, he came up and said, he, even him, he couldn't determine who won the election. You know, it was as bad as that, right? And yet, nobody has been taken to court for the stolen election. So we argued, if you, are, if, you, if you haven't taken anybody for stealing the election, why would you take anybody at you for uh, sponsoring violence? When we all know that there was no planning <coughs> of violence, this whole event happened on 30th 
when we left KICC under police orders, when everybody was run out of uh, KICC, and the country went up in flames, number one. Number two, we also said, you cannot set up a tribunal with um, stations in Nairobi, in Nakuru, in Eldoret, in Kericho, and in Kisumu. It means you have already put it down in your mind that the, where you want to charge people is Nairobi, Eldoret, Kisumu, uh, Kericho, and, and Nakuru. I mean, you have already a prejudiced mind on who you want to charge, right? Because violence was all over the country. There was violence in Mombasa. Why don't you want to set up a tribunal in Mombasa? There was no violence was in Meru. Oh yeah, maybe there was no violence. <laughs> <laughs> so so you, those, are, those were the arguments uh, at that point in time. And for the record, and for the record, I want you to go and check the Hansard. William Ruto voted for the local tribunal. Okay. There's William a... Ruto, go and check the Hansard. I voted for the local tribunal. Okay. There's a question from a viewer who asks, um, what do you have to say about the um, killing, the, the burning down of the church um, during, the post, uh, du during the election violence? Because apparently you've never said anything. I have said everything. Okay. In fact, on the day the church burnt, we had a meeting uh, of, um, of uh, ODM that time, on that particular day. And in fact, it was uh, Professor Kamar, who is my counterpart from Eldoret East, who received a, a telephone call from the police officer in Eldoret. And the police officer said, there has been um, an explosion in, in, in a church in, Kiam, in Kiamba, and several people have been killed. It is believed that there was, uh, these people were cooking, and there was an explosion of a stove. You know, that was the initial, but subsequently, it was a different story. And for, for the record, there are four people who have been charged in court for uh, participating in the Kiamba violence. And those people were finally acquitted because there was no evidence that they, they participated in the burning of the church. As we talk today, we would want, all want to know what really happened in Kiamba. Was it raided? Did people go and burn the church with people inside? Or was it an accident inside the church because there were too many people and they were sleeping in the church? I have personally met the pastor of that church, the, 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 the fellow who ran the church. I have had a discussion with him on, on, on what really happened. I mean, so anybody alleging that we haven't said anything about the Kiamba church? Well, just, <coughs> thanks. I mean, it's good you talk about the Kiamba uh, case. Uh, listening to people in the public domain, there seems to be a certain perception that you have not expressed sufficient remorse mm -hmm. for the post-election violence and the killings which occurred, especially in Rift Valley, um, in Kiamba included, Band Forest and so on, uh, because um, your attempts to you know, bring back peace have not been targeted at bringing back, restoring people to the previous stations or statuses. Two, and which was, even in my view, I wonder why, when there was a memorial for the Kiamba church victims, and even the president attended, you missed that event. What, how do you explain that? Number one, let me start with the memorial. There was a controversy as to where exactly these people should be buried there was a controversy on the ground. Right. And even the priests on the ground were not in agreement. That's number one. Number two, this uh, whole event was planned in secret. We were informed six o'clock when the function was tomorrow. Really? I got a telephone call from uh, Kimemia at six o'clock in the evening when the function was tomorrow. How and the whole, was it secret? the whole of ODM, the whole of ODM did not go. Did not go. It's not just William Ruto. Did not, did not attend uh, uh, the funeral. But that is behind us. And when you talk about remorse, are you in any way <coughs> suggesting that I am responsible for the violence? You know, that, that would really be very serious, Makali. No, I, 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 hope you're not, I hope you're not uh, buying into any um, pedestrian, you know, um, discussions as to a portion who caused the violence. Not at all. We have been very clear. When we went, we are among the first members of parliament to go to Pan Forest, to go to uh, Keses, to go to Kimuri, where all this violence took place. We went there with members of parliament from Central Province, 
Then many people said, no, these, these people are not coming for peace. These are looking for, these are looking for politics. When the government started the operation ruling Mbani, as leaders from Wazingishu and its environs, we said we welcome. In fact, we will join in by saying Operation Karibu Nyumbani, for the record. And uh, for, for the people who are uh, driving this uh, small agenda in the streets, let me use this platform to say 99%, I don't want to say 100 because I'm not sure, 99% of everybody in the areas that we come from who had a piece of land has either gone back to his piece of land or has ownership of his piece of land or has sold his piece of land. All the IDPs you see today in Makali, in Mawingu, in uh, the rest of the places, are people who did not live, who did not have farms. And it, they were doing business even, and things like that. Even the minister for special programs has said as much. But if you're not sure people, of the 100%, how can you be sure of the 99%? Are, these are, I am sure of the 99% because we have said, we have gone public, we have said anybody who had a farm in Wasingishu, where I come from, who has not gone to his farm because of insecurity, let them step forward, we will make sure that they go to their farms. You'll ensure restitution. How do you um, answer the viewers who believe that you have an obsession with the Prime Minister, Raila Odinga, some say that you hate him and you blame him for your troubles <laughs> at the International Criminal Court? Well, um, of course, if I were the party leader of, of ODM, mm -hmm. I, 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 would, I, would, I would have handled this thing differently from the way Raila Odinga has done. How would you have but handled that is it him. differently? You know, that is him as How would you have handled it? I'm not the party leader, so yes. it is not necessary for me. I, but I would certainly have handled this thing much more differently. But how? Uh, because you say you, 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 which you, thing now? ICC, the ICC yes. uh, whole. Uh, so how would you have uh, handled it? Because you feel that he hasn't handled it properly. Absolutely. So what would you do because, as party leader? Uh, um, I, I would have handled this. this or in fact, what is your point of departure from how he handled it? Where did you differ on this matter? Maybe that would be a better way of dealing with that. I, I think uh, you know, for for my party, the ODM party, to pretend, you know that we were not together, that we, we didn't have a, an, an ODM strategy that we all believed in, that we all worked for. And that strategy did not have at any point, in any form, a, a, a strategy on, on, on fighting people or on violence. And for them to keep quiet and pretend, oh, no, you see, every, let everybody carry their own cross, you know, uh, let, 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 let these people go and uh, 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 exonerate themselves. I mean, really, this, this was a party that we all subscribed to. I mean, ODM should have been the ones to stand, f to stand up and say, these are our members. As a party, we did not have a strategy on, we, we all of us, we were looking at a, a celebration because we all knew at that point in time that in fact we had won this election. So you, you feel betrayed. I think um, you feel betrayed by the prime minister. I don't want to say that, mm -hmm. but I'm saying I would have handled this thing uh, a lot more differently. But and if, if ODM had handled it in that particular manner, the results would be different. Okay. But so you feel would hung they, would out that have the, the results would be a lot different. Would that have stopped the SEC from coming here? I can tell you the results would be a lot different. I, I cannot tell you that it's uh, like you're saying that's not very commitment. Yeah. No, and you're being quite vague. Yeah. I'm not being vague. Yes, you are I'm, being vague. I'm being straight mm -hmm. on what I have told you. Right. That that would be a lot different. But you know, ODM is the one which wrote letters. You know, Makali, let me let me tell you. If you read one of the letters written by Professor Nyang mm -hmm. Nyong, yeah. which actually became a subject of a vicious debate in the ODM PG itself. Because the PG itself could not believe what Anyang Yong wrote. And some of those letters written in secret by Anyang Yong, and I am, uh, let me not say because I don't have fact, but you really, really, Raila Odinga as the party leader, I mean, should have had, you know, an idea of what was going on. He, he tried to distance himself that he, he didn't tell but Anyang Yong. Okay, so you say, but you see, as okay. a party leader, the buck stops with you. Right. These are some of the things that have driven this matter to this extent. Is it when, 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 when people are arrested after, after the fighting, mm 
Mm. Did we not hear public outcry from ODM saying these are freedom fighters have been arrested? Who said that? The people, the pe people said, and they, they are there in the newspapers, mm. that you want those fellows released. You see, you are freedom fighters. Uh, we didn't say we didn't say about freedom rights. I'm, I'm I'm one of the people. In fact, maybe what did you uh, say? I, I'm one of the people who actually said these young people should be released. Those are the people who killed them. They are not the people who killed. These, These are, are the, the people who had demonstrations. They had demonstrations in the streets. They were arrested by the police. For your information, of the 1,300 people killed, 70% of those people were killed by the police. 40%. So here. Not 40%. Not you go, you, you look at the report. Bullet wounds, you know. These were killed by the police. So... In, okay, when, when, when you close down William, a country, William. when you bring in um, uh, um, uh, uh, sec security laws in a country, in a situation where the tensions were high, how many people were shot in Kibera? You know, the, the bodies were all over the place. How many people were shot all okay, over the place? Uh, the, the, the question here is this. Uh, you actually on record and repeating that you call on the release of all the people who had been arrested mm. over the violence. Mm. Without evidence whether they were actually just demonstrators or they had actually participated in crime in torching people's houses and killing people. Yeah. Is that justifiable? It is justifiable to this extent that the people who were arrested, right, unless the police proof, because we told them, you, you cannot arrest people who were demonstrating. If you have proof that so and so killed, like what they have done now, they have arraigned some people on evidence, hard evidence. But at that but point, how would the police prove if they were arresting them, you had no evidence that they had no evidence against those people in the first place, but you are calling for their release. Know, Completely we, disregarding we live, the victims we live in, Kenya. in this particular we, case we live, of those crimes. We live in Kenya, uh, Makali. If you round up uh, 1,000, 2,000 people in the street, in Eldoret or in Kisumu, you know, how, how would you say these people are responsible for torching that place or the other place? And for your information... Okay, but then how do you explain those who had actually committed crimes? What about the crimes which had been committed? Those killings, who had uh, committed property destruction, those, those, theft, those how who did you those deal who with that? committed crimes, the police needed hard evidence. When we told the police to release, if they had hard evidence, they would then say, we cannot release Makari because we have evidence against him. We cannot release so-and-so because we had evidence against him. And that's what the police did. They released those who they did not have evidence, and they kept those who they had evidence. Very quickly, though, um, isn't the w would you agree that the basis of your um, uh, alliance, um, informal alliance with Uhuru, is that both of you feel that um, Raila Odinga um, is the cause of your problems at the International Criminal Court? I think let us leave Raila Odinga out of this. Mm -hmm. You know, Raila Odinga is an individual. We are dealing with 40 million Kenyans. You know, how would we, you know, we have, uh, we have supporters in millions, right? We have uh, our own beings. We, you know, we are independent human beings. How would we subject all our lives to an individual? It seems unlikely, you know, though, given let that... Me, let me uh, tell you, that's, that's a lot of nonsense. That's a lot of nonsense. Frank, the public will not take that explanation. That is right. a lot of nonsense. We, we, because, we, you know, it has been peddled and peddled and peddled. Let me ask you, Makali. Yes. When uh, the NAC uh, rainbow thing came together, who were they fighting? It was defeat Uhuru and Moi. When uh, we There's came together, when we came together in uh, in ODM, yes. you know, from all political parties. So who are we fighting? You are to defeat Moi Kibaki. So when we come together in uh, G7. Who, who says who says that the script is basically why not defeat, this time the defeat, answer is simple uh, to, to defeat, defeat Raila to defeat because, Raila they, they because to be a threat. the issues the issues that face this country go beyond Raila Odinga for the record what I stand for as William Ruto is the single critical challenge that face Kenya is the quality of the leaders we elect quality of the leaders right the, the tragedy the tragedy why Kenya is stagnant and why we haven't moved forward like the way other countries have done. And yet we have tremendous potential in our country.
is because of the kind of leadership we elect. If you, if you, on, if you we'll have to break on, on that note. We'll have to break on that thought. No, no, we'll okay, have to when break on that thought <laughs> when we come back. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget that if you have any <laughs> questions <laughs> or comments for the Honorable William Ruto, the SMS number is 2442 and the Twitter handle is Cheche underscore TV. Still ahead, more on his ambitions for Kenya and the country's leadership. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, the program is Cheche, live on Citizen TV and Hot 96 FM. Our guest this morning is presidential candidate William Ruto. Before the break, he was making a point about um, his ambitions for Kenya and said the problem with the country is the quality of leadership. And Mr. Ruto, there's a text uh, here from... Deco, who says, you know, you talk about the quality of leadership in Kenya, but you are the problem. You should not be fighting the presidency when you have the ICC hanging over you, which you several see, of our viewers have mentioned. Um, let me, let me tell mentioned. you, let me tell you, you know, when we get the wrong parameters mm. to look for our leaders, we get the wrong leaders. Right. Because you have used the wrong criteria. So what should because the criteria the bottom be? Line, the bottom line is, do we have men and women who can deliver on their word? Do we have a men and women who have a track record of performance? That's the bottom line. Because what will take this country forward is what we do as a country, not what we say. I see a lot of people talk about, oh, you know, you should elect me as president of Kenya because uh, I talk about reforms. Give me a break, you know. Reform is not in the talking. <laughs> talk about reform, reform is in not in the, the talking. In the reform doing. is in the doing. Look okay. at, let yeah, me give you an example, yes. Makali. Yeah. When I was Minister for Agriculture, today, the, minister for, uh, the Ministry of Agriculture has imprints of when Minister William Ruta was in office. I agree I, with you. I changed that ministry. Uh, when I went to Ministry of Higher Education, there is a track record of what I did when I was in that ministry. There are people who have been ministers in this government for 20 years. True, there are I agree with you have about been the in office for so many years. They can they have nothing to show for it. Why would they want to be in office or to go to the next office if but, they cannot show but what they can do? So the bottom line here is performance. Who can uh, match what they say with true, what true, they true, do? True, true, but the issues. When you do perform very well, yes, I agree with you. You did very well and it was record. But there are issues about uh, underhand things. Correct. I would this, respond to that. Yes. Yeah. I would land, respond to that. I will respond to that. Okay. Let me like, like the, the, the allegation that you have taken, me. You are taken the, 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 the professional road. That, let, that let, me, let, me, let me tell you, that, that is uh, your own creation. That, that, that's what? That is your... You that, know, uh, I don't know. You, you run a very big <laughs> risk. Take, because you say <laughs> what you are not proved. I have no proof. I have no proof. No proof. Okay. <laughs> so, so answer. Okay, Don't fine. make this thing about rumors. Right. right. So tell us the about the maze scandal. Yes. When the maze, the so-called, let me say the so-called maze scandal, that never was. Because that scandal was investigated by five agencies. Five. By the CID, by the Kenya Anti-Corruption Commission, by the audit in the office of the, um, of the, or in, the in the Treasury, by um, uh, the, the, what is it called, e EMU, yes. the Efficiency Monitoring yes. Unit, and finally by a forensic auditor. None, not one report, said William Ruta was responsible for nothing. Number two, unlike the maze, unlike the oil scandal, unlike the education scandal, where people were charged in court, even if th though, though the ministers were not, but certain individuals were taken to court, not a single person, not even a clerk, got a, let a warning letter under the so-called because of cover up. So what cover up? I mean, because the whole thing was was in, 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 so the whole thing was in the prime minister's office. What, what, what it was in the Prime Minister's office. And in fact, you so, yourself, so, you know, you yourself and said, us, let us, you yourself and blame the office of the Prime I Minister. I did not blame the, the office of the Prime Minister. In fact, I took on a responsibility that did not belong to me. Because I mean, the May's issue, the, the, the strategic grain reserves, and I said it in Parliament, the strategic grain reserves were under the Ministry of Special Programs. They were not under my ministry. The parastatal that ran it was reporting to my ministry. And for your information, this issue went public. It even came to the floor of the House. 
And in the floor of the House, 80% of members of Parliament voted with me. But, because but I laid the first William, fair on, okay, the, on the ground. All the reports notwithstanding, you know the small matter of the note that you did saying allocate or give so and so some help. Correct. Uh, that is on the record. That's on the record. That is not uh, upright or uh, in, the, in you know uh, proper yeah. office conduct. Yeah. And we know uh, for your that people and I know them. <laughs> and so many of those for your information. They send people to buy from there without moving, and they confessed. For your information. Don't want for your information. Yeah. Of all the notes that were written, out of hundreds that were written. One was written by my personal assistant then, on my instruction. Yes. And it was written for a guy who is in Kariobangi. And I said I was willing to stand by him. A guy who has no legs in Kariobangi, who has a meal. And you can go and see his meal. And it was, he was supposed to be sold maize like any other Kenyan is being sold maize. And unfortunately, he did not even get the maize. Okay. That, that, that letter was let, let, I think we shouldn't be bogged down that by that means, scandal. There is the land issue. Because the, the, scandal I, I, was the, the, the scandal was never there. No, the Bill, there was a scandal, <laughs> except not. nobody was netted. But no. the scandal was there. Was the, I mean, the, the fact that no one was a scandal, scandal. There is no bag of mail that was, sold, that was sold and not money recovered. There was nobody that uh, took mail from there without paying. How does it Was that means exported to Sudan? That is now for the uh, CID to say. <laughs> the CID did not say there okay, was Okay, I just wanted to invite on land. Not even land. I think the issue of land is, uh, you know, I have no evidence, but there are a lot of, there's a lot of speculation regarding land and what William is said to have acquired or benefited. Uh, and fairly. the matter went to court. I, I, that's why I don't want to get into it and, because and the it's matter in court. was dismissed in court. I just want to look at this farm thing, madam. It went to court. The land was sold by Kano. It was not sold by William Ruto. Kano have admitted we sold the land. The fellow who bought the land said, I paid. The bank which received the money said, yes, we received the money and we posted it in our books. How do you take William Ruto to court? To go and do what? And that eventually it went around in circles for seven years. What about that and then family other dispute with somebody in there? You know, that, that's the one he's talking that's about. That's the one, that's what he's referring okay. to. David, you have a question. Let's, 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 uh, Very you know, quickly, because now we're running out of time. The question <laughs> that I, I really want, William articulated something here about leadership and Correct. the quality of leaders we elect. Correct, yes. mm. Now, I want to take William on, on yes. his own record of leadership, Correct. or the people he raises up as leaders. Correct. You have, you know, you are with Moy. Yes. That's great leadership, or I don't know what you think about it. Correct. You, I will answer you. you. You went and supported Raila. Yes. You now think that was not good leadership. Mm. You are now in partnership with people in G7, Uhuru mm. Kenyatta, and so people who have been on the other side of your political uh, uh, you know, career mm. all the time. Mm. What makes these people now ideal for Kenya's leadership? Mm. And why are you telling your supporters these are the right people? Number one, with Moi, tell me one of these guys who, has, who was not with Moi. Doesn't, uh, in fact, doesn't make no, any just difference. Wait, just wait, just doesn't wait, just wait. Yes. Okay. In fact, if anything, I was minister in Moy's government for two months. Raila was minister in Moy's government for two years. Uhuru was there for longer. Kalonzo was forever. You know. So I mean, <laughs> if you want to talk about Moy, I mean, talk about I don't know who you are, what you are going to say. No, we are judging you by that, judgment. Let's leave that out. Yes. Let's leave that out. Right. So as for Moy, everybody was with Moy. Number two, you are talking about <laughs> Raila Odinga. Hmm? <laughs> And, uh, and this ODM, uh, yeah. ODM, ODM brigade. Yeah. I mean, politics, my friend, is a game of interest. I have no problem with uh, uh, Raila Odinga. But, you know, if you say something, you know, as, as ODM, there are things we said we must do. And Raila Odinga will tell you, I persistently went to his office. The document that was given to me by ODM, the Ministry of Agriculture, I did a good job out of it. Others did not. Okay. You know, so I mean, if you if if you are in a team where other players, instead of doing what we agreed to do and sort out the issues of our country, they went there to do other things, and okay. we went up in a circus. What 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 are you? I'm, I'm not I'm not plastered. Right. So very quickly, Mr. Ruto, very quickly, your vision for Kenya then, because you say that it uh, deserves. I believe. Uh, rest. I believe mm -hmm. Kenya is a wonderful country. Mm -hmm. This is the best country anyone could belong to. Kenya is a great place. We can only make it greater. I believe that three serious issues we must sort out. We must sort out insecurity in our country. How would you deal with it? Insecurity is a very All basic issue. Number one, 
we must get value for the money we put in security. We pay, for example, for our security hardware, I think three, four times what we should actually pay because security purchases are subjected to some secrecy which is completely unnecessary. We should open up security purchases to um, tendering that is, that is clear and that is supervised by parliament so that we pay for what we get. As we are talking today, to be able to buy a gun which is being taken around by policemen in the street, it is a secret. What is secret about buying a gun? which policemen are, run, are, are rolling with it around in the street, number one. We need to sort out the management of our security issues. Our policemen, they either do not have vehicles or they are under remunerated. We, we must be clear, if we want to secure this country, and unless we secure this country, it will be difficult to do business, it will, be, it will uh, in, interfere with our investment, it will uh, interfere with our tourism, and we won't be able to grow this economy by... Uh, double digits. Secondly, we must sort out the youth issue in our country. The single critical resource we have in Kenya, and I, and I missed the opportunity when I was in the Ministry of Higher Education. I had planned to do it properly, that we equip our young men and we, we, women with skills. As we are talking, we need to re-engineer our education system so that we don't churn out people who have anthropology and history and what have you to come and roam our streets. We need to arm our young people, men and women, with skills so that we can tap skills their talent. Skills that are needed in the, in, in the you know? uh, market. E exactly. When, when we have this debate, education must be accessible, affordable, and relevant. quality, but most importantly, relevant. We must points. sort out the hunger problem in our country. We can secure this country um, with, with, uh, we can eliminate hunger in our country. It is possible. I have done it myself when I was Minister for uh, Agriculture. I know we, if we expand irrigation, we make uh, certified seed and fertilizer available to our farmers, we mechanize our farming, we can turn around this country and 10 million old Kenyans need not sleep hungry in our country. These are issues we, we don't need rocket science to do. You just need firm, decisive, focused leadership. And that's what I offer. How would you deal with, for instance, um, uh, these uh, international travel advisories against Kenya um, and how it relates to how the security agencies react to intelligence? Because it's rather unfortunate that uh, a day before um, the American uh, embassy warns its citizens against uh, traveling to the coast, that um, uh, a couple of hours later we have a grenade attack. I don't know if the two are linked, but it just seems as if people are asleep on the job. How would you deal with that? Let me tell you, madam, I was in, uh, in, in Tobinia, where so many Kenyans lost life because of cattle rustling. I was in Kisi. So many people are having sleepless nights because of cattle rustling. I was in Turkana South, where the whole citizenry are up in arms because of cattle rustling. They cannot sleep, their children cannot go to school. Now we have a whole dimension with uh, terrorism in our country. It cannot be business as usual. We have actually a crisis of insecurity in our country. And it will have a serious impact on how we will grow this economy. And we are giving it leisure fare, you know, approach. And I'm, I mean, this should by now have reached crisis levels. And you know, government, our president, should really be you know, summoning cabinet to, to look at our security measures. What is it that we are not getting right? Because insecurity is actually becoming a threat to the development of our country. Um, the travel advisories, I mean, surely, I mean, you cannot blame the Americans for what they are doing. I mean, surely, they, they tell us there is going to be a, a, a terrorist attack, and a day later we have a bomb, and yet we are continuing say, to say, oh, you know, our okay. security agencies are in charge. I don't yeah, know. Sure I mean, surely, I mean, sure Kenyans, how? <laughs> I mean, in which place? I mean, let's be serious. Let us call a spade a spade. Uh, uh, just ahead, uh, looking at, um, I want to take you back to your politics and the G7 <laughs> and your alliance with the European and its internal. Um, yeah. You have accused uh, ODM, you moved out of there and charged the ODM with dictatorship. You went into UDM and you had a bit of problems there as well. People seem to accuse you of the same dictatorship. And now there are ripples within URP. People are not happy the way you're running the party. Is leadership of a party, are you finding it uh, challenging? Leadership is challenging in general. 
right? And uh, for your information, we, we disagreed in ODM for various reasons, and I think the reasons are in the public domain, right? Aside from, and, and if you think uh, I was wrong, because I am the one who started this whole thing and I said, no, something is not right here. But subsequently, what has happened in ODM? Banala has left. All these other guys have left. Musalia was the last one to leave. You know, of, of, the, of the Pentagon thing that was in ODM, the thing has become a shell. So, I mean, really, if, if I was wrong, then I would have left alone. But the whole game has, has changed. The question but is let how me tell you, you see, URP, yeah, your own party. URP is not my party. URP that's, that's is a problem. party that belongs to Kenyans. I am a member, like any other, like any other member. And we are managing the party as a, as a college. In fact, if there is a party that holds regular PG, the latest being yesterday morning, it is URP. Okay. And that is why we are scaling the country, because we, we have an agenda. We know where we want to take uh, this country, and we know how to get there. And we have we are assembling the machine to take us where we believe this country should be. Okay. So, let me just read him right. some text from you as we're impressed with him. If there's anybody I give credit to, that man, he's great. Uh, Mwangin Laikipia, you're a leader. I like you. Keep it up. Um, we're accused of prejudice against you. Um, you are brilliant. Um, ODM should have stood by him the way they did with Koske. Definitely the kind of leader we require. That's from Victor in Rueru. Uh, um, Onyango, um, William, you are my president. Move, move, move. But there's a question from a viewer who doesn't give us a name. Have you paid tax? Yes, I have. Okay. Um, as an I, pay, I pay all my taxes. As an MP? I pay my taxes as an MP. I mm -hmm. pay my taxes as a businessman. Mm -hmm. I pay my taxes everywhere. A question about your background. Um, where have you worked apart from YK92 and being an MP and minister at some point? Uh, I've worked as an untrained teacher. <laughs> I that was your first job, wasn't it? No, I started by selling chicken mm -hmm. at, uh, at the village okay. before I graduated and started to sell cows when uh, it was fashionable. And then I became an untrained teacher. And then I became a hustler in town. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Hustler has negative connotations. Well, it has. I, mean, uh, I don't think uh, that's what I mean. Okay. I think um, there is a lot of, of uh, people hustling in this town. Right. And um, I, I think I, I, I am, to an extent, I am happy that uh, God has given me an opportunity to come this far despite my background. Your faith is uh, of... I'm a Christian. You're a Christian, and you're a singer. Uh, yeah, you're a choir master No, no, I am an evangelist. You're an evangelist. Yes. Okay, that's uh, uh, interesting to hear. A question. What are you doing to reconcile Kalenjins and Kikuyus uh, in the Rift Valley? For the record, we have had uh, very serious meetings uh, between the um, Kalenjin leadership in terms of the elders, the Kikuyu elders, we have had uh, the church involved in um, the reconciliation efforts. In fact, uh, we had engaged the end uh, commission on integration to provide a framework for communities to uh, discuss. We were in Eldoret the other day where children from all the communities, Kikuyus, Kisis, Kalenjins, they even went for initiation together. They went to initiation because there was even a perception that oh, when colleges call for initiation, they are, they, are, they are taught how to fight, which is a fallacy. So in Eldoret, um, I attended one of the occasions when young men from all the communities went to one initiation ceremony and, and came out as, as, as Kenyans. So okay. I think a lot of a lot, uh, a lot being done. is going in. Um, the, the, there are several questions the, about your uh, opposition uh, to the Constitution uh, uh, and how you would square that. With uh -huh. uh, there are several questions position. about uh, your opposition to the Constitution mm -hmm. and how you would square that with being president of Kenya. You see, the people who uh, believe that uh, uh, by saying that we should amend the Constitution before we pass, uh, that becomes a disqualification. Those are just dictators. You know, when the Constitution was presented, our position, those people who voted no, we, we pushed, we said, there are issues in this Constitution which need to be rectified so that we can pass. The argument on the other side was no, when we agree there are issues, but let us pass, we can sort out those issues later. So there wasn't anybody who actually was against the Constitution. The issue was there are 
uh, issues in the constitution do we amend them now and pass or do we pass and amend later those of us who say let's amend before we pass were defeated and we gracefully agreed how you know as not, democrats how come we are not pursuing those issues now after we took the constitution how, how come you are not saying See, they will come i mean this a constitution is not a document for tomorrow i mean this is a document that is there it's a living document and for the record this constitution over time it will be rectified you know they, we have a lot of contestations now we have issues in the constitution that people feel this should have been for example we have 140 cases in court on 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 issues of the of the electoral of the electoral boundaries reason chapter 89 of the constitution gives a very skewed way of allocating constituencies you know that areas like north hall north hall is like central province western province um, uh, Nyanza province put together one constituency is like four provinces put together yet it wasn't subdivided okay. I know these are issues that concern Kenya <coughs> We're out know, of time. if we are talking about representation how does a guy who represents a quarter of Kenya alone be effective when we all are representing small places okay um, any last words David you're well, always accusing me of um, cutting you off. You know, William hasn't told us how his <laughs> bid is going for presidency. But I'm sure he'll come here again so we can discuss specifically how the workings are in mm -hmm. G7. Mm -hmm. okay. But there are people who believe... Talk to me about URP first. But uh, you, you, know, you are in G7. That's, why, why, more, yeah. that's the more okay. pronounced <laughs> title. And then okay. URP. We must hold right. you to okay. account for you. Okay. And there are those who think that William is not serious, that he's running only up to half the mile, and then he'll hand over the baton to somebody else. There will be the He's there running as a kingmaker and not as a presidential there will be, there will be candidate. Be sure. that okay, next. There will be excellent. Well, we're out of time, and as uh, David says, we would like to have you back on the yeah. program. Yeah. Uh, you know, you lots sure? of uh, yes, we'll lots of comments from our viewers. Yeah. There are those who support you, and there are those who feel that uh, yeah. um, you do not uh, deserve the presidency, okay. but. We will thank you for your time here, William Ruto, Member of Parliament and Presidential Candidate, uh, along with Mutegi Njao and David Makali. And to all of you who shared your opinions, I'm Urwa Kamimo, that's Chache this week. Thank you for joining us.